Welcome to Three Part Connection with Tommy. This video is on your raw results and maybe your main event. Spoilers. Uh, birthdays for this week, uh, from this week, from August the 4th through the 6th. August the 4th, Dean Malenko, who was born 1960. Suicide, he was born 1977. Whichever one it was. August the 4th, Kazarian, 1977. August the 5th, Pat Tanaka. 1961, Daniel Bravo, 1949, and rounding our birthdays, August 6th, Tony Nese, he was born 1985. Dean Malenko is still a WWE uh, road agent. Top WWE superstar Dean Ambrose is set to make his, re his return to action very soon. Ambrose is expected to return to the ring within the next month. According to PW Insider, where it is that Ambrose is scheduled to be at Summer Slam pay per view on August 19th in Brooklyn. And it is believed that he will return to the WWE storyline sometime around then. No word yet on if he will appear at the pay per view, but multiple sources have reported that he's expected to be back. As he has been seen, has been out of action since December with a triceps injury, and was reported that he would be out of action for around nine months. He was recently at the WWE Performance Center in Orlando to train, and he's made frequent trips to Birmingham, Alabama to visit with doctors. Ambrose was working the Raw brand at the time of his injury, doing a reunion of the Shield with Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins. There's more, no word yet on what they have planned for him when he returns, but we will keep, I'll keep you updated. Any, any news I, I get. An intro for the Chris Jericho collection on the WWE Network can be seen at this link. Also noted, a new collection on The Miz also went live today on the network. I didn't get the video link for that. Along with some uh, there's also some new classic content. There's still no word yet on when Nia Jax will return to WWE Raw, but she is not currently backstage for the show in Jacksonville, Florida. According to PW Insider, Jax has been away from TV since Extreme Rules on July 15th, and she noted on Instagram, Last week that she was rehabbing, but she did not specify what kind of injury she may be suffering from. The Rock recently sent out a heartfelt message remembering Brian Christopher who passed away last week. He and Christopher became close when The Rock cut his teeth in the USWA, which I did not know he was in. I have seen a picture of him and Lawler together. We rode together daily 1,500 miles per week, as The Rock wrote. He and Christopher spent many days together training, working wherever they could, and working their way up the professional wrestling business. He spoke about nightly Madden tournaments and hotels and eating at the Waffle House with Christopher. And not name, name brand hotels. Is that even Motel 6 that they, they said that they were going? Uh, the Rock said, uh, "said it breaks his heart how Christopher's life ended, and my love, light, support, and strength to Brian's father, Jerry the King Lawler, and Brian's mother, Kay, as well as Brian's family and friends. And the Instagram link for that. Christopher's father, Jerry the King Lawler, also paid tribute to his son by wearing his son's Grandmaster Sex A's vest to the ring for his match all over the weekend. Events. Lawler had a match against James Ellsworth at USA Championship Wrestling Show in Jackson, Tennessee. Ellsworth later also later commented about how emotional of a moment it was to wrestle Lawler on the show. And you can go to that link and see Jerry King Lawler best that he wore. And I don't know. Yeah, I'll have I'll have a, some more news. Real shortly. Uh, at Real Real Ellsworth, just wrestled the, the, the emo most emotional match of my career. Words can't describe the amount of respect I have for at Jerry Lawler. It's a true honor and pleasure to share the ring with him always. Brian Christopher's Brian Christopher Lawler's brother, Kevin, posted a photo of Brian's casket, which contains a, at this link, contains the Pittsburgh Steelers logo, along with his WWE moniker, Grandmaster 6A. Visitation and funeral services for Christopher was, was was taken this past Friday at Hope Church in Memphis, Tennessee. The visitation was at noon and was, with the funeral taking place at 2. 
Again, go to that link. Again, my condolences to the Lawler family and friends. No word yet on when Nia Jax will appear to return to the WWE Raw, but she is not currently in action. I'm currently backstage for Raw in Jacksonville. I think I've already did that news. Yep, already did that. If you don't know, I have uh, been with uh, Jerry King Lawler and got, got his autograph, as well as my daughter wearing his. And according to him, my daughter was the first ever person to ask to wear his crown. Hulk Hogan was at the National Sports Collectors Convention in Cleveland yesterday to sign autographs for the fans. During the event, Hogan got on the mic and said, There's a lot of stuff going on. WWE put Hulk Hogan back in the Hall of Fame. That means I get to go back and beat Vince McMahon on, up one more time. To all the brothers out there, here with the NWO shirts on, something really special is going to be going down. Just remember the date, October 27th. Go to HulkHogan.com. Something very special is going to happen. Go there to find out what the Inside Scoop is, guys. And also, you can find that at this link for the video. As Scott Hall commented, Hey, yo. Well, let me do my, my impersonation of him. Hey, yo. At Real Kevin Nash, you're free on 1027? I am. Hashtag NWO. Outsiders reunited at the Performance Center in Orlando this week. According to uh, PW Insider, noted how before WWE Hall of Famer Scott Hall was at the PC to work with talents this week. Also, Hall of Famer Kevin Nash was also there. Joining Hall to give advice and assistance to the WWE talents. Ambrose is expected to return to the ring within the next month, according to BW Insider. Where it is that Ambrose is scheduled to be with, at SummerSlam on August 19th in Brooklyn. And it's believed that he will return to the WWE storylines sometime around then. No word yet on if he will appear at the pay-per-view, but multiple sources have reported that he's expected back soon. Prediction or spoiler alert, my prediction, if they're going to uh, get him, uh, give him, get him back with a shield. As I was saying, helping out Seth Rollins to regain his title. As it supposedly still could possibly be a triple threat. Ambrose, well, already did all that. <clears throat> uh, Batista is uh, getting some mainstream media attention this week for his comments on working for Disney following the firing of Guardians of the Galaxy director James Gunn who some of the uh, talents might be uh, taking a hiatus from the next movie Guardians of the Galaxy 3 that will soon be taping because he commented and said that he was not going to to act. When asked if he has any plans or, or a response for Disney, if they do not reinstate Gun for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, the animal could commented on how it's pretty nauseating to work for Disney. You can see his recent tweets on Gun. Nope. Gun on Twitter. He wrote in response to the fan, I will do what I'm le legally obligated to do, but at Guardians without at James Gunn is not what I signed up for. GOTG without J at James Gunn just isn't GOTG. It also pretty, it's also pretty nauseating to work for someone who's who'd empower a smear campaign by fascists at cyber not Nazis. That's just how I feel. Disney fired Gunn back on July 20th after a joke tweeted on, on pedophilia, rape, 911. And the Holocaust were uncovered from 2008 to 2009. Many actors have supported Gunn through the debacle, including the entire cast of the Guardians of the Galaxy. The cast released a joint statement on July 30th, but Batista has been the most vocal in his support for Gunn. Batista is set to reprise his role as Drax the Destroyer in Avengers 4. But if I'm not mistaken, in one of the movies, I think it was Avengers or whichever. Drax was killed. And then Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 in 2020. 
He also comes back in. Uh, I will do what I'm legally obligated to do, but at Guardians, without at James Gunn, is not what I signed up for. Without at James Gunn, just isn't Guardian of the Galaxy. It's also pretty nauseated to work for someone who would empower a smear campaign. That's just how I feel. Elias Elliott is the person who tweeted to, uh, to Dave Batista. Love your support for at James Gunn. Do you have any other plans or response if Disney doesn't reinstate him for GOTG 3? And they, they, uh, Dave Batista uh, tweeted back, I will do what I'm legally obligated, as I've already repeated that twice already. And the latest spoken word of the week from video, week video, from Matt Hardy, the broken one. I just think. The word is pusillanimous. And is a definition and used in a sentence, education, for those who cannot understand the words of wisdom. Go to that link for exactly what he said. SmackDown General Manager Page is currently backstage for a Raw in Jacksonville. No word yet, uh, yet on what page will, uh, is there to appear on Raw for. If she's there for Total Divas filming, but she was getting her makeup and ha hair done, indicating a possible appearance. Tamina Sucker was also backstage uh, at Raw. Sucker has been out of action since January after suffering a torn rotator cuff. Or torn rotator cuff uh, is popular these days. Do you have any take the following matches in Jacksonville, Florida for this week's main event? Spoilers? No way. Jose defeated Kurt Hawkins. Chad Gable, Heath Slater, and Rhino in six-man action defeated The Ascension and Mike Kanellis. Raw opened up with a look back at what happened with Universal Champion Brock Lesnar, Paul Heyman, and Raw General Manager Kurt Angle last week. We're live from Jacksonville Veterans Memorial Arena in Jacksonville, Florida. As Michael Colesaw welcomes us to the show, he chimed in by, by Corey Graves and Jonathan Coachman. Well, that's Corey Tattooed Graves. We go right to the ring. Out comes Raw General Manager Kurt Angle and, and constipated Constable Corbin. That's Triple C. JoJo does the re the introductions. Angle says tonight will be historic as Ronda Rousey makes her Raw in-ring debut. Angle says unlike other former UFC competitors, Rousey doesn't mind competing on Raw. Angle does, goes on praising Rousey and says, he wishes he could say the same about Brock Lesnar. Corbin tells him to watch it. Angle takes more shots at Lesnar and confirms Paul Heyman's job is still intact because he got Lesnar in the ring last week. Heyman will be interviewed by Renee Young later. As far as Lesnar's attack on Angle, he's going to. Music interrupts. Out comes Roman Reigns. Reigns takes the mic and says Angle should have known better because he kicked the big dog out last week and no one was there to protect the yard. Which is why Lesnar ragdolled them last week. Reigns asked Corbin why he's smiling and what he did last week. Nothing. He ran like a scared little interruption uh, from Angle. As Reigns says, no one likes what Lesnar did last week. Starting with hit, with the top on down. Reigns interrupts and says, Angle better not be suspending Lesnar or postponing the SummerSlam match. Angle says he made sure Lesnar won't be suspended and made sure SummerSlam Match is still on. Angle just hopes Reigns kicks Lesnar's butt. Cobra says that's really unprofessional of the general manager. Cobra says if Lesnar was here, he'd and Roman Reigns interrupts and take, take takes more shots at, at Corbin for running away like a, like a coward. I'll use uh, I'll use the word that Matt Hardy used. Pusillanimous. Uh, Corbin says he didn't run. He chose to be the bigger man. Something Reigns knows nothing about. Consummated Constable Corbin says he also had competed last week, defeating Little Finn Balor. More argument between the three leads to Angle making Reigns versus Corbin to start right now. Angle calls for a referee, but Corbin drops the mic with a cheap shot, and the match is on. No referee for the first two or three minutes. As we get a bell, as Reigns recovers and the referee comes out. Reigns immediately nails a Superman punch in a close two count. Corbin Triple C runs out, rolls out to the, floor, to the floor for a breather as Reigns regroups in the ring as we got a commercial. Back for the break. 
Triple C avoids the Samoan drop. Cobra runs out and back in for the clothesline. Reigns kicks out at two. Triple C keeps control and takes Reigns to the corner for more offense. As Triple C whips Reigns hard in the corner and he goes down. Triple C then drops Reigns with an elbow and keeps him grounded. Triple C then takes his time and keeps Reigns down with elbows. The Triple C with another submission in the middle of the ring. Reigns looks, looks to make a comeback. Triple C ducks the flying clothesline. And Reigns comes right back and knocks Corbin over the top rope to the floor. Reigns rolls to the floor and nails a drive by. Reigns brings Triple C back in the ring, but he, ro he rolls back out. Reigns tries to bring Cor Triple C back in, but Corbin rocks him a few times. Triple C then r r drops Reigns from the floor as we go back to commercial. Back from the commercial, Triple C has Reigns grounded after a shot into the ring post. As Reigns fights back and nails an elbow to the jaw. Reigns drops Triple C with a shot off the, off the ropes. Triple C runs into a boat, a boot in the corner. Reigns with a Samoan drop for a two count. Reigns unloads with a clothesline in the corner. Reigns runs the ropes and floors Triple C with a big boot. Fans cheer as Reigns waits in the corner for a cover to get up. Getting ready for uh, signals for the Superman punch, but Corb uh, Triple C blocks it. Reigns blocks the choke slam. Corbin, ca uh, Corbin ca catches Reigns with a deep sits, but Reigns kicks out of two. Triple C with more offense uh, to Reigns now and avoids the end of days by and rocks uh, Triple C with his right hand. Corbin gets sent out and run, runs back in and takes out the cameraman by accident. As they went to a different angle, almost right at the perfect time, Cor uh, Triple C runs back in, but Reigns gets the upper hand. And, uh, pin attempt for a two count. A Triple C avoids a big shot from Reigns by rolling out to the floor again. Fans boo as Triple C looks to be walking out of the match. Music interrupts and out comes Van Balor for a pop. He walked down the ramp. Forcing a constipated Corbin back in, back towards the ring. Corbin turns around as, as Reigns comes jumping off the steel ring steps with a Superman punch to Triple C on the floor. Reigns brings it back to the ring and nails a spear on, on Triple C for the win. After the match, Balor claps from ringside as Reigns music hits. We go to replays. Reigns look, looks at Balor and then Corbin and leaves the ring so Balor can do his thing and they give the, the fist pop. A fist bump. Rain stops at ringside. Battle is a, enters the ring as Cor Corbin is still down. Triple C gets up and Battle drop kicks him back into the corner. Battle goes up for, for the coup de, for the coup de, coup de gras and nails it. And then Battle, Battle exits the ring as the music pl plays. We see Ronda Rousey and Natalia backstage talking. As Ronda is do, doing her Stuff, so, yeah, I got I, I got the Ronda Rousey fast moves too. Let's help. Rousey versus Lisa Fox will uh, will take place later on in the show, in Rousey's first singles debut on Raw. Bobby Roode's backstage, putting on his robe, looking him, uh, at himself in the mirror, posing, what have you. Roode versus Mojo Rawley will take place back to commercial. Back for the rate, we we'll see what happened with. Uh, Last week with Seth Rollins, Drew McIntyre, and Dolph Ziggler. Fans pop as the cameras cut to Rollins backstage. To Kurt Angle backstage. Rollins brings up his SummerSlam title shot and how he needs to eliminate McIntyre to get his fair shot. Rollins says he needs to take care of both McIntyre and Ziggler. Angle tells him to find a partner and he can have a tag match tonight. Even about my buddy, Robert, was a, he texted me right after that with a Done. I guess he was watching the show for once. As Rollins thanks Angle and he walked off. He was saying that possibly his uh, former tag team partner, Dean Ambrose, back. I told him, nah. I didn't see any news about it. Now we got Bobby Roode versus Mojo Raleigh up next. Uh, we go to the ring. Out first comes Bobby Roode. We see like last week's back backstage locker room brawl. That set up the match. Mojo was out next. Bell rings and they go at it. Mojo takes early control. 
Rude fights back and rocks Mojo into the corner. Mojo sends Rude into another corner. And Rude comes powering out with the clothesline. The tangle. And Rude sends Mojo to the floor. Mojo comes right back to the apron. But Rude drops kick, kicks him back to the floor. Rude stands tall as he got a commercial. Back for the break. Mojo re, re, remains in control for a few moments. The trade holds. And Mojo nails a side slam. More back and forth. Rude calls for the Gloria's EDT. But Mojo rams him into the corner. Rude rocks Mojo as he charges. Rude comes off the second rope, but Mojo catches him in mid-air. Mid-move. Mid Rude turns that around, hits Gloria's EDT for the pinball. And what are the match? Rude. Rude goes to the floor to celebrate as the music hits. Elias is backstage with a film crew and a staffer. The staffer is going over production notes, but Elias already has everything in mind. He tells them to just do their jobs. And it will turn out perfect. Eli starts playing the guitar as we go to commercial. And the fans are popping. Already back for the break. Eli is in the ring with his guitar. He plays some and the crowd pops. Eli gets another pop. After asking who wants to walk with him. He plugs his new album. He says he's got four songs on it. And brags on, brags on the success. He also plugs his new documentary on the WWE Network. Walk with Elias Network. WWE Network, Walk with Elias. Uh, Elias says the network tried their absolute best, but they got it wrong, which is why he has the film crew here tonight. Elias says they're going to do this the right way, the Elias way. Elias has everyone to silence their cell phones and pay attention. He starts playing, but stops and tells the camera crew to focus more on his, on his fingers. Where the magic happens at? He starts playing again, but stops to instruct the camera crew just to circle, circle him as a film. He takes a shot, shot at Bobby Roode and starts playing again. Uh, not Bobby Roode, but Bo at Bobby Lashley. Eli stops again, this time saying the problem is the fans of Jacksonville. Fans boo him now. Elias barks at the crew and rants on last year some more. Saying what happened last week will not happen this week. He starts playing, but the music hits and the lights come on as Lashley makes his way to, to the ring. Lashley calls Elias a funny guy, saying he put, he put Lashley's name on his mouth, in his mouth again. And here he is, once again. Lashley says nothing was wrong with the first documentary. They have some words on Elias, and Elias orders the crew to keep the cameras on him. Not on him, not Lashley. Elias says Lashley is out here trying to steal the spotlight from him. That's not happening. Elias accuses Lashley of trying to steal his spotlight back when he returns to the company. Elias says Lashley's entire comeback has been a joke. Lashley calls everything about Elias a joke. His boots, his guitar, his documentary, and about a dozen other things. Lashley goes on and says what he does to Elias will not be a joke. Elias has Lashley in a bad mood tonight, so they will go in the back somewhere to finish the documentary. Elias helps the crew out of the ring and throws a clipboard in Lashley's face, distracting him to start an attack. Elias drops Lashley. Drops Lashley and works him over, talking trash. Lashley blocks the shot and drives Elias in, into the mat with a spine buster. Fan chapter Lashley as he tells the crew to come back in the ring and film what's about to happen. Lashley lifts Elias for the vertical suplex and holds him up in the air for about 20 seconds. Lashley brings Elias back down to the mat and stands tall as his music hits. The camera crew gets a close up on Elias on the mat. Lashley poses in the corner and mocks Elias. Still to come segment, Ray Young. We'll interview Paul Heyman. We see Drew McIntyre and Dolph Ziggler backstage. Soon to come segment, Drew and Dolph versus Seth Rollins and a mystery partner. Well, who Coleslaw says will not be Dean Ambrose. Who is still out of, out, out of action and for surgery. Uh, Ronda Rossi versus Alicia Fox will also take place. Batch commercial. Rezzer of Authors of Pain will take on Titus O'Neil. From Titus Worldwide, we go to ring out comes the Authors of Pain, Rezzer with a, a combat commercial. Back for the break, Seth Rollins is backstage with Tyler, Bray, uh, Tyler Breeze. Walt up, Breeze offers it to be in Rollins as tag, as tag, tag team partner for tonight's match. Breeze offers his first, I mean his fist, for a shield style bump as Roman Reigns also appears. Reigns asks Rollins if he's serious about this. Rollins says everyone wants to be a member. Reigns says no to Breeze and says he will have Rollins back. Tonight, for the match with Dolph Ziggler and Drew McIntyre. We go back to the ring and also to the pain. Wait in the ring as Titus Worldwide comes out. 
Titus O'Neill with Apollo Crews and Dana Brooke. Back for the break, Razor takes Titus to the corner early on. Razor keeps the show and talks some trash. Titus tries to fight back, but Razor drops him with a knee. Razor with more trash talking. Razor pounds on Titus some more and takes him to the corner for a shoulder thrust. Dana cheers Titus on as fans boo uh, Razor. Razor with a boot in the corner. Razor manhandles in the corner and talks trash. Titus fights back with a right hand. Titus takes him to the corner and connects with a shoulder thrust. Titus with a big chop to the chest. Titus with more offense from the corner, but more back and forth now, with Rezor taking control. Rezor ends up hitting a spine buster and getting a pin after a big boot in the corner. After the match, Akam joins Rezor in the, in the ring as their music hits. They leave together and Titus Worldwide regroups. We see KO backstage talking to Jinder Mahal and soon he'll sing. During his... Uh, Type of thing. As we get the uh, Kevin Owens show coming back, and his, they're doing some uh, pre-show segments, and they agree, they, they agree upon. But KO changes things when he gets in the ring, and Jenner isn't too too happy about it. As we see KO. Uh, near the stage, we had a new setup for the return of the Kevin Owens show. He is then introduced. He introduces his guest, personal friend and guru, Jinder Mahal. Out comes Jinder with Sunil Singh, and he's smiling. Owens says he was skeptical about Jinder's methods at first, the breathing and all of that crap, but it's work work because he's at peace like never before, and that's all because of Jinder. He talks about not being in pain and being able to play with his kids because of Jinder. But that's not why he's out here. Owens asked Jinder to be his guest tonight because they have something in common. Owens talks about how Braun Strowman and how most people see a monster when they look at him. Fans interrupt with a we want Strowman chant. Owens brags about his steel cage win over Braun and, and last week's count out win for Jinder. Owens says uh, Braun tried taking everything from him as stream rules but Owens is going to take what he has at SummerSlam to become Mr. Money in the Bank. Owens says this will make him KO in the bank. Owens says this will guarantee that if he that he can finally reclaim his WWE Universal title. Owens goes on more and thanks Jenner for helping him be at peace and clear headed. And Jenner's going all that. <coughs> Owens is so clear headed. He has a great idea for tonight. Jinder versus Braun. Jinder doesn't look so thrilled now. As Owens is all for it. Owens calls for Braun to come out. Braun doesn't appear. And Owens says this is because he wants none of Jinder. Owens custom built stage. Starts rocking as they stand up from their chairs. The stage is then tipped over. And the cameras cut behind and we see Braun doing his thing. Braun talks over, talks over the ramp. Raises his arms for a pop as his music hits. Jinder, Singh, and Owens are all down on the ground, looking shocked. Braun marches to the ring with the Money in the Bank briefcase. We go back to the commercial. It's like an add-on to the original stage, as he just left it. And the original stage is still there. Back from a break, we get a replay of what Braun just did, dumping the stage over Kev uh, of the Kevin Owens show. Braun waits, waits in the ring while, uh, while Jinder Mahal KO as soon as he'll see him right ringside. Owens is trying to talk Jinder into the match. Jinder hits the ring and the bell rings. Fan chat get these hands as Jinder tries to calm Braun down. Braun yells at him to come bring it. Owens grabs the Money in the Bank briefcase and tries to leave with it again, but Braun gets in his way at ringside. Owens retreats and drops it. Braun picks, picks it up and chases Owens. Owens runs away and Braun almost gets counted out again. But he makes it back in. Braun takes Jinder into the corner and tosses him across the ring. Owens comes back and grabs the briefcase. Braun chases him up the ramp and rocks him in the right hand. Braun picks up the briefcase, but Jinder runs up the ramp and attacks him. Braun hits Jinder with the briefcase and gets disqualified. Winner by disqualification, Jinder Mahal. Uh, after the bell, 
Braun chases Jenner at, at ringside, but Singh comes from behind to make a save momentarily and grabs the briefcase himself. Braun drops him and goes after goes after Singh and drops him at ringside. Jenner retreats through the crowd as Braun enters the ring and waits to fight some someone. Orange Hall trash from the stage while Jenner looks on from the crowd as Braun raises the briefcase in the ring as his music plays. So the come segment, Reigns and Rollins team up again. Contemplated Corbin is backstage on the phone with Raw Commissioner Stephanie McMahon. He finds Kurt Angle, hands him the phone. It sounds like Angle doesn't agree with Stephanie. Is telling him and says he will handle it. I think I took a bathroom break at this, at this time or fell asleep again. Does the show was getting boring during that Braun Strowman to the Hall match. So I missed that little segment. Still to come segment again. A special look at Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar by commercial. Coleslaw leads us to a special look at the rivalry between Roman Reigns and, and Universal Champion Brock Lesnar. Video includes footage from earlier in the day with Graves interviewing Reigns. Graves said Lesnar declined to participate. Reigns talks about how he's going to be a fighting champion when he wins the title in Brooklyn. Reigns says he has to win. Handicap match. Seth Rollins versus Dolph Ziggler. Versus Drew uh, and Drew McIntyre. We go to the ring. Out comes Intercontinental Champion Dolph Ziggler. Drew McIntyre without next to head to the ring together. It's a good back to commercial. Back from the break, we see Roman Reigns walking with Seth Rollins backstage. They're stopped by Triple C and Kurt Angle. Uh, Triple C tells Angle to relay the message from Stephanie, but he won't. And Triple C says Stephanie doesn't want to jeopardize the Summer Sam main event, so Reigns is banned from teaming with Rollins tonight. Reigns doesn't care what Stephanie says. He's going out anyway, but Triple C says he will forfeit his Summer Sam title shot if he does. Rollins tells Reigns if he will figure something, he will fi figure something out. Triple C says this is now a handicap match. Rollins heads to the ring for the match as Reigns comes back to punch Corbin in the gut. We go back to the ring. Out comes Rollins as McIntyre and Ziggler wait in the ring. The bell rings and Rollins starts off by slapping McIntyre. McIntyre chases Rollins out and back in. Rollins drops him and pulls Ziggler into the ring. Working him over, Drew comes back in, but Rollins kicks him in the face. Rollins sends Ziggler over the top rope to the floor. Rollins goes to the top and knocks Ziggler off the apron. McIntyre catches Rollins in midair, works him over, dropping the knee into a backbreaker. Drew works Rollins over on the mat now, beating on him. Drew with more offense and Rollins before tagging in Ziggler. Ziggler mocks Rollins, but Rollins fights back. Ziggler takes out the knee and sends Rollins to the corner for a double team. Drew takes Rollins to the mat and keeps him grounded. Drew with more offense on Rollins. Ziggler comes back in, but ends up missing a, a big spot in the corner. Rollins finally gets an opening as the fans chant his name. Rollins with a strike to Ziggler. Now, Ziggler sends Rollins to the floor. Rollins pulls Drew off the apron to stop the tag. Drew gets set face first to the ring post. Rollins comes back in and hits the sling blade on Ziggler. Rollins holds on Ziggler over the top rope to the floor. Rollins runs the ropes for, for a suicide dive, sending Ziggler into a barrier. Rollins brings Ziggler back into the ring and springboards in with a clothesline. Rollins with a kick to the gut of Ziggler. Ziggler avoids a stomp and hits, a, hit, hits the knee. Rollins blocks the famouser and he hits a buckle bomb. But he doesn't see, see a tag. Drew comes in and levels Rollins. Drew keeps Rollins down. As Drew comes in for a double team, they mock him. But Rollins gets a two count. As Ziggler drops Rollins with a super kick after more back and forth action. The covers for the win. Winner of the match, McIntyre and Ziggler. After the match, we see there was no tag. But the referee's decision is final. Again, a screw job. McIntyre and Ziggler stand tall as Ziggler's music hits. And they even show a replay of no tag. Still to come, Renee talking to Paul Heyman, also Fox versus Rousey. We get a quick highlight video of, on Fox's call. Talks about her career. The B-Team versus Revival was up next. We go to ring out comes Tag Team Champions of the B-Team, Curtis Sacks and Bo Dallas. They debut new music and hit to the ring for this non title match. I didn't recognize the music myself. Back to commercial. This was even a more boring match. 
I went to the kitchen to cook something. Uh, back to back from the break, Rousey was backstage warming up as Natalia watches. We go back in the ring, out comes the revival, Scott Dawson's ex father. We get a backstage promo from the revival as they head to the ring. The bell rings, Dawson locks up with Axel. Wilder tags in to come in and take over. Axel counters and drops, da drops Dash. Dallas tags in for a double team and a close two count. Dash takes out Dallas back to uh, corner. Dawson tags in and double teams Dallas. Dawson slams Dallas face first into the turnbuckle and goes back to work on him. Dawson with a clothesline and a quick pin attempt and then, then another. Dawson keeps Dallas grounded. The graphic suddenly flashes on flashes and, and the lights go out. They come back on and Matt Hardy is on one corner while Bray Wyatt is on the other. The leaders of the world are back on Raw. And a Axel and Wilder are nowhere to be seen. As they're apparently laying, lying on the floor somewhere, Wyatt hits this every goal on Dallas after Dawson goes, goes down. The leaders of the world drag Dallas and Dawson to the center of the ring, pose over them as, as the music hits, and we see Axel and Wilder down on, on the outside. Till the come segment, Paul Heyman talks to Renee Young back to commercial. And there was no announcement of a winner for that match. So I guess at the pay-per-view, it could be triple threat. Or Panel Four Way Tag Team ma Title Match. Uh still to come. Paul Heyman talks to Renee Young back to stay, back to commercial. Back for the break, we see Paul Heyman backstage with Renee Young for a sit-down interview. Already recorded. Heyman says he doesn't know where he stands with Brock Lesnar. And Lesnar has disconnected his phone line. Heyman has also tried reaching him through intermediaries, but Lesnar won't take his calls. Heyman turns to the camera crew and says, this interview is just going to piss Lesnar off more. He's actually looking like he's about to cry with teary eyes and what have you. But he asks Heyman, if Heyman considers Lesnar a friend, and Heyman says he's really enjoying this. Heyman gets emotional and says he does consider Lesnar a friend. He goes on and says this isn't how he envisioned it, ending as they always talked about riding off into the sunset together. With the UFC title and the Universal title, as he's, he's like looking around like he's waiting for somebody to interfere. Then Renee asks Le Lesnar if Lesnar still needs Paul uh, Heyman in, in, his, in his career. Heyman continues to get emotional. Renee asks if he wants to take a minute. He tells her just to do it. Just do her job. She asks if he has his eye on anyone else as a potential client, specifically from NXT. Heyman says that question would have been inconceivable last week as this whole situation is. Heyman says this isn't inter interchangeable. Renee asks him who will win the match with Reigns at SummerSlam. Heyman talks about knowing Lesnar for 16 years, but he's never seen him more focused and violent. Heyman says Reigns doesn't stand a chance against Brock Lesnar. And that ends the interview. I'm not to show, uh, show a replay of Braun Strowman dumping the stage for, for, on Kevin Owens' show earlier. They go over Silver Sam card. The Riot Squad versus the Boss and Hug Connection was up next. We go to the ring. Out comes Sarah Logan and Liv Morgan of the Riot Squad. Batch commercial. Back for the ring. Out first comes Sasha Banks. Bandy was also out next. The Boss and Hug Connection heads to the ring together. The bell rings. And Sasha starts off with Morgan. They lock up again and entangle. Banks warns Liv to stay off her hair. They tangle it again. Liv nails a big right hand. Liv stomps away in the corner now while Banks is down. Liv screams out and sticks her tongue out, but misses a charge in the corner. Banks sends Liv face first into the corner, and in comes Bailey with a two count off the double team. Liv turns it around, and in comes Logan. Bailey counters with a hip toss. Bailey drops an elbow for a two count. Bailey keeps Logan grounded by her arm now. Logan fights up and drops Bailey with a right hand. Bailey catches Logan with a boot in the corner. Bailey with a crossbody for a two count as Banks shares her on. Back back, a, back from a commercial break. 
Uh, uh, Logan, uh, Logan County. I'll go. I skipped a little bit there. In my report here, Logan countered and sla assigned Bailey to the mat. Logan countered again and went for Bailey Harding to turn buckle face first. Bailey landed hard and went down. Liv tagged in and stomps on Bailey in the corner. Bailey rolls to the floor for a breather against the barrier. Sasha comes over to check on her partner as we go back to commercial. Back from the break, and Logan still has Bailey down in the middle of the ring. The fans try to rally for Bailey as Bailey w waits for the tag. Liv is all smiles as Logan brings Bailey back down to the mat and keeps her grounded. Bailey finally gets an opening, but Logan pulls Banks off the apron and stops the tag. Liv and Logan double team Bailey in the corner now. Liv comes in and ends up driving Bailey's face into the mat for a close two count. Liv screams at Bailey while working for over. Bailey avoids the shot and tries to tag Banks. But Liv stops it and drops her again. Bailey creates another opening and spans her on. Banks and Logan tag in at the same time. Sasha unloads off the hot tag. Logan sends Banks to the apron, but Banks drops her with a, with a knee. Bailey tags in and brings Logan to the mat with a hurricanrana. Banks follows up with her knees for, from the top. But Liv breaks the pin just in time. Bailey tosses Liv out to the floor. Bailey leaves off the apron, but a person dressed in all black with a hoodie pulls Liv out of the way. Liv drops Bailey on the floor. The person is then revealed to be Ruby Riot, making her her return from injury. Banks sees what just happened and turns her attention to Ruby. Logan takes advantage of the distraction and rolls Banks up for the pinfall. Winner of the match, Riot Squad. After the match, Riot Squad heads up the ramp together as Banks checks on Bailey at ringside. We get a video package for Ronda and her SummerSlam match against Raw Women's Champion Alexa Bliss. Ronda Rousey walks out of her dressing room and joins Natalia. They walk off together. Rousey vs. Alicia Fox is next. Match commercial. Alicia Fox vs. Rousey. Back from the break, out comes Alicia Fox for tonight's main event. Wild Women's Champion Alexa Bliss was, out, was with her. Charlie Caruso waits in the ring. Asks Fox about Rousey's first Raw match, but Bliss interrupts, making uh, mocking Caruso for asking about Rousey. Bliss praises, praises Fox as a trailblazer, a former champion, and a pioneer of, of the women's division. The Fox is agreeing to a very similar reaction uh, from uh, from General Mahal. Bliss tells Caruso to put her generalism to good use and ask another question. She asks Fox about how she prepared to step in the ring with Rousey. But Fox mocks Caruso again and shows us a replay of her attack on Rousey from last week's show. Fox goes on about being better than Rousey and Bliss takes the mic. Dismissing Caruso, Bliss says, we wouldn't be having uh, the Evolution pay-per-view if it wasn't for the women like Fox paving the way. Bliss just wants to thank Fox for her contributions. Bliss mentions take, taking care of Rousey at SummerSlam and asks Fox if she's going to let some rookie come out here and steal her thunder. Absolutely not. The music interrupts. Out comes Rousey with Natalia. Rousey hits the ring and is ready to go to fight, staring Fox down. Bell rings and we get formal ring instructions from JoJo. Rousey hits a big pop from the crowd. Fox starts off by mocking Rousey. Rousey just looks at her. Fox swings and Rousey catches it. Rousey knocks Fox to the map with a shove. Fox goes to the floor to regroup. Bliss acts like she's going to get on the apron, but Rousey is ready. Fox stalls returning to the ring and Bliss keep, keep teasing interference, getting on the apron. Natalia comes over and and brings Bliss down on the floor. Bliss comes from behind and shows Natalia face first into the ring post. Rousey comes right, comes out to check on Natalia, and Bliss gets involved. Fox unloads on Rousey in the corner as the referee warns her, but she keeps going. Rousey is angry now. Fox wastes time and turns around to, to an angry Ronda. Rousey backs Fox into bear, back into the corner with jabs and body shots. Rousey tosses Fox to the map by her arm three three times. More like hip tosses. Ragdolling her. Rou Rousey gets a big pop as, as Fox retreats to the floor. Rousey follows up and fo launches Fox, Fox into the barrier. Rousey brings Fox back to, into the ring, but Bliss hits the apron. Rousey swings and Bliss jumps to the floor to avoid it. Fox tries to come from behind, but Rousey catches her and sends her flying across the ring. Rousey yanks Fox into the middle ring by her arm again. Making sure Bliss is watching, Rousey taunts Bliss by dropping Fox back into the armbar for the submission win. After the match, Rousey looks on 
talks trash and bliss. Who is still watching from ringside? Natalia hugs Rousey in the ring. As the music plays, we go to replays. Charlie comes in with the mic and congratulates Rousey on winning her Raw debut. Rousey thanks everyone for, wa for watching and says it feels great to focus on just SummerSlam now. Bliss tries to attack from behind, but Rousey tosses her to the mat. Bliss retreats. Rousey takes the mic and says it doesn't matter how tight Bliss holds the title because she's taking it at SummerSlam. Rousey slams the mic down and stares Bliss down as the music starts back up. Bliss heads to the back with the title. Natalia raises Rousey's arm and they hug again as celebration continues as Raw goes off the air. And there was no dark match main event after Raw this week in Jacksonville. The main event saw Ronda Rousey defeat home star Alicia Fox. As Raw went off the air, Rousey and Natalia continued to celebrate in front of the crowd and waved to the fans. They made their exit to the back, and that was it for the show. So that concludes my results for this week's spoilers for WWE main event and Raw results. Thanks again. Peace out. See you on a If you don't know, just call me, brothers and sisters.